the day with the usual fight about not wanting to go to school. That morning, I lost. I left my first class of the day positive that my best friend hated me. Off to a great start. I was then greeted in my next class by my on-off boyfriend, and we had an unpleasant conversation. When class ended, I saw him hug a girl who he'd been flirting with for a while. I instantly started to cry and ran to the bathroom. Now, you might be thinking, why are you telling a story about your bad day as a 13-year-old? It doesn't seem that significant, right? Well, that day, I tried to take my own life by ingesting 30 times the recommended dose of paracetamol. And when my mom picked me up, I was brought to the hospital. A few months later, when I finally saw my friends again, we went to the cinema, and I was offered some M&Ms. I said, nah, I'll stick to the paracetamol, thanks. <laughs> what brought a child to try and take her own life? Well, the short answer is, it started in childhood. You see, the thing is, for most of us, our parents weren't taught how to regulate their own emotions or how to communicate in a healthy way. So those tools weren't passed down to us. When we are children, our parents don't treat us the way we need, we internalize it. We don't have the intellectual capacity to be able to comprehend that it's not our fault. So we develop coping mechanisms to help us get through childhood. The issues start to arise when we carry on with these redundant coping mechanisms as adults. You see, it's not our fault what happened to us as a child, but it is our responsibility to manage it now. We create emotional loops as children to survive, but we need to break them as adults to thrive. Emotions are chemicals in our brains. Like drugs, we can become addicted to them. Yeah, getting in a fight about the same thing over and over again doesn't feel great, but it feels familiar. We are used to the state it puts us in, and we are comfortable like this. This is why some people never change, complain about the same things, keep saying, I'll start Monday, and never do. They developed this response in childhood and never looked at the actual cause for their behavior and continue to live their life in a delusional reality. Why did an ex-boyfriend trigger me so much? I got to this point because, like most of us, I didn't have the childhood I needed. One example is my dad was emotionally distant when I was a child, so my later years, when a boyfriend wasn't giving me validation, it was the end of my world. I wasn't able to validate myself, so I looked for validation through external means. I was trying to win him over as a coping mechanism because I couldn't win over my dad as a child. I asked my friends from Scotland, what would I be doing if I still lived there? And they all say the same thing. I would be dead. As you can see, I'm still standing here today. <laughs> so how is that possible? Luckily, I moved here with my dad. Wasn't he the guy who instilled these feelings in the first place? Yes. But he worked on himself and found an amazing therapist for us. That is the main reason I am still alive today. The correct structure for therapy is so crucial. I told my previous therapist I was planning on taking the paracetamol, and he told me to go on a walk. <laughs> Luckily, I learned from my next therapist that healthy communication and awareness is the key. Once I understood the root of my issues, I was able to have compassion towards myself and my family. I now know it's not my fault. It's because of how I was raised. That's not to say it's my parents' fault. It's because of how they were raised, and so on. There's nobody to blame. There's only opportunities to grow. Change is difficult. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes things still really trigger me. But knowing where my emotions are coming from helps me view things rationally. I'm able to get out of this state faster, and my response is much less severe. When I was 13 years old, I honestly did not imagine myself living to this age. But today, I couldn't be more grateful that I am here right now. Have the courage, like my dad, to change because you can save the lives around you.